So Anderson Regional Joint Water System is a drinking water provider for about uh, 200,000 customers um, in Clemson and, and Anderson and some of the surrounding communities. Um, and going back to 2012, 2013, uh, they'd been experiencing some intermittent um, seasonal taste and odor issues. And what, uh, what that means is that uh, the, the drinking water that they were um, providing uh, had a very earthy, uh, musty odor to it. Um, and it was really you know, just un, un, unsatisfactory for um, a lot of their customers, and so they were getting a lot of complaints about that. Uh, and then in 2014, um, the, the taste and odor got so bad in their uh, drinking water uh, that they sought out uh, my research group for um, some advice, for some um, technical uh, help figuring out where their problem was coming from and what they could do about it. And so one of the first things that uh, we did was try to identify um, specifically where their problem was coming from. Uh, and the first thing that we identified was that this, this taste and odor was due to um, two compounds in particular, uh, two tertiary alcohols called 2-methylisoborneol, or MIB, and geosmin. Um, and so we came out here to the 6 and 20 Creek Cove of Hartwell Lake where the uh, water intake for Anderson Regional Joint Water System is located. Um, and collected some samples. Uh, we used a, a water sampler uh, to try and determine um, where, these, where these compounds were coming from. Uh, a, a unique property of these compounds is that humans are um, sensitive to them at very, very minute concentrations. So the detection limit is around 10 nanograms per liter. Uh, so one um, maybe advantage of this is that uh, the human sense of smell um, is a pretty good analytical device for um, picking them up. So we collected water samples at various depth, uh, depths around the, the water intake um, and really just gave them kind of a sniff test. And in doing so, we identified that uh, a majority of these compounds were um, located uh, near the sediment water interface, um, so at the, the bottom of the water column around the sediments. Uh, and we pulled up some um, some substrates, so some rocks and some logs uh, from the bottom, and found that that's where uh, really the the bulk of that odor and that and was coming from, um, and that these substrates were covered with uh, an algal assemblage, so um, kind of a, a, a paraphyton. Um, some people might refer to it as kind of a, a scum. But we took that back to our laboratory at Clemson and uh, looked at it under the microscope and identified a few different algae that are known to be producers of 2 methyl isoborneol and geosmin. And so that's how we were able to identify that the putative source of these compounds was coming from um, an assemblage of primarily three cyanobacteria or blue-green algae um, belonging to the genera Oscillatoria, Planktothrix, and Anabina, and um, diatoms belonging to the genera of uh, Fragilaria and Tabularia. And uh, so with that, we had identified kind of where this problem was coming from and what was um, the source of this taste and odor that was uh, being taken in by Anderson Regional Joint Water System. Um, so the next step was to figure out what could be done about it. And uh, one of the things that uh, we determined was that, uh, or, or uh, one, of, one of our research groups uh, interests is in a concept called adaptive water resource management and, and source water management for issues like taste and odor in drinking water. And so what that means is that uh, if you can go out into the source water, so the 6 and 20 Creek Cove here of Hartwell Lake, and uh, control the algae that are producing these taste and odor compounds, uh, then you can um, kind of stop the problem before it even gets into the uh, drinking water treatment plant. And so in 2014, in the fall of 2014, um, we conducted some experiments in our laboratory uh, to kind of uh, determine what would be uh, an advantageous way to go about uh, source water management for these taste and odor compounds.
I believe that they're doing some, they're, they've continued to do some uh, algicide applications um, periodically to manage these taste and odor compounds. And that kind of came about um, after, uh, you know, our pilot treatment in 2014 and uh, some, um, a treatment plan in 2015. Um, and they've kind of, uh, of continued um, with that management plan that, that we kind of helped um, design for them to, to some extent. Uh, the pilot treatment in 2014 occurred um, around this intake here, uh, just, up, just upstream in this direction and, and just downstream of the intake. Uh, with two, two algicides, uh, phycomycin SCP and algamycin PWF. Um, and what we did was in the laboratory determine kind of what concentrations of algicides, so what amount of algicide they needed to apply um, to be effective at controlling these taste and odor producing algae. And then in, in 2015, uh, we kind of took a more proactive approach to the problem. Um, Anderson Regional Joint Water System had a capacity to treat these, these compounds um, in-house with their uh, conventional water treatment processes, uh, but it wasn't sufficient for the concentrations that they were receiving. So our plan was um, to kind of determine uh, at what point the taste and odor concentrations would exceed their capacity to, uh, to treat. Um, and then when we reached that threshold uh, to use an algicide application, uh, in the lake to control the taste and odor producing algae and, uh, and decrease the concentration of these compounds in their source water. Um, and so we, we did some, some strategic monitoring throughout the fall of 2014 and into um, and throughout 2015 to keep track of um, the growth of these taste and odor producing algae as well as uh, increases in the concentration of these taste and odor compounds so that we could trigger um, algicide applications at an appropriate time. Um, and so that's, that plan uh, has, has carried forward. I know Anderson Regional Joint Water System has continued for, um, in, through 2015 and 2016 and, and even uh, to date with some strategic monitoring of, of um, their source water to uh, stay on top of, of any taste, potential taste and odor problems um, so they can continue to provide their constituents in Anderson uh, County and, and, and Clemson with um, quality drinking water. The algae themselves um, are not inherently dangerous for humans and the algicides that we used uh, likewise um, at the concentrations they were being used at aren't going to cause any adverse effects for uh, humans. Um, there are two reasons I say that. Number, the first is that the compounds have uh, a limited persistence in an aquatic uh, system, in a water resource. Uh, the uh, phycomycin SCP is a peroxide based algicide, uh, which the ultimate fate of peroxide, uh, it breaks down into water and oxygen. Um, and that occurs pretty rapidly after an application. Um, so there aren't any residuals of peroxide that are going, going to wind up um, being taken in by uh, Anderson Regional Joint Water System and, and ultimately making you know, their way into uh, you know, the homes of their customers. Uh, similarly, um, algamycin PWF is a copper-based algicide and uh, copper precipitates out of solution, again, uh, pr relatively rapidly within on the order of days. Um, and, and so that won't persist in the water column and make its way into a drinking water reservoir either. Um, so, and both of these compounds are also certified for use in drinking water re reservoirs by the National Sanitation Foundation. Um, so these were, were algicides that uh, can be used in a situation like this. You know, one of the, the unique characteristics about uh, how these algicide applications occur is that uh, because the algae were located at the sediment water interface, so covering um, rocks and logs um, uh, at the sediments, in the sediments, uh, the algicide applications were performed in a very targeted way. Uh, you know, one, if you have a problem such as this, you don't want to treat, uh, you want to treat the algae 
control the algae that are producing these compounds, not treat the water column. Um, so the applicators that uh, were um, that applied these algicides did so with weighted drop hoses to to apply the algicide specifically um, to the bottom um, portion of the water column right around where these algae are. Uh, and so that's another reason why you wouldn't anticipate any of these compounds making their way um, into the, the drinking water treatment plant um, or being a, a real concern for um, human health issues on down the road. But.